Back here on Sportsline, we'll talk about Vanderbilt now, which was oh so close to snapping that long SEC losing streak at South Carolina, but just couldn't hold for that final drive. Defense, four turnovers on the day helped them get to the lead, but they give up a 75-yard drive to Zeb Nolan and the Gamecocks in 59 seconds. The game-winning touchdown to Xavier Leggett with 37 seconds left, and all of a sudden that losing streak to 16 straight in the SEC. Another loss that gives another lesson on winning for Clark Lee and the Commodores. With the way Saturday's game finished, uh, you know, did you have to talk with your team about uh, what happened in that final drive there by South Carolina? And, and how do you use that to maybe try to build on it uh, going into this week? Well, certainly we talked about it. I mean, I think we talked about the whole sequence. You know, it's a... It's learning. Um, it's learning for us all, you know. And I think that's the um, there. There's an element of it that's um, the ability to execute it, right? To to be in the right positions, and that's not just like a, a desire thing. That's a you know, it's a, a teaching thing. That's coaching. I mean, we have to in the specifically to the, to the two minute drive um, where they had a minute thirty six with no timeouts. Um, you know keeping the ball inside and in front, tackling in bounds. Uh, we can't afford to allow for chunk plays. Um, you know, zone integrity is important there. So, you know, we're in, we're in drop eight zones. And the point is that in those zones, you got to play uh, together. You have to be interlocked. And when uh, we have uh, vacant zones because guys are driving routes underneath them or whatever the case may be, you're, you're going to end up in situations where you open up seams for chunks to happen. Um, there's also learning from a coaching standpoint too, you know, what we call, what we do, what our strategy is there as the field constricts. Um, certainly we have to, we have to also constrict, we're still defending to the goal line. So there's still an element of, you know, you want South Carolina to feel the pressure of the clock. We just weren't able, weren't able to get the ball down in bounds. That started on the first play where we had an opportunity to. So it, it's a, <clears throat> It's a, a situation that we want to be better in, obviously, that we have to be better in. If we're going to be a one-possession team in the fourth quarter playing in tight games, that's got to be where we thrive. Um, unfortunately, we weren't, we weren't um, you know, um, able to, to finish the game off. And there's ownership in a lot of areas there. I think when you, when you go even further back, you say, how do we finish that drive with the ball in our hands? You know, finish the game with the ball in our hands. So that's the four-minute execution. And um, yeah, I thought we had a really good push early in that drive. Was really excited about the way we were running the football, and then a sequence where it a tackle for loss, and um, you know, a third down <clears throat> play where we had we had the numbers where we wanted them, and we had Cam uh, open, and we didn't sustain blocks. And um, you know, third and seven that goes fourth and five. You know, you're really looking to get inside a three for me, at least to say, like, let's go for this and just finish it. Um, those are all things that we scrutinize and decisions that we make. But ultimately, for me, um, the way the clock was timed at a minute 36, um, you know, the, the idea that our, our defense had had a series of stops and played really well, uh, you know, to try to get them to drive for 75 yards to score a touchdown puts a lot of pressure on the offense, you know. Um, a, a turnover and downs um, that that you know where they're looking to get in the field goal range to tie it. You're, you're you're tightening the amount of yards they have to accumulate. I think the other thing you have to take into consideration that we talk about, even on the fourth down attempt, is you know how it shifts the offensive play calling mindset. You know what we did was we forced them into a situation where they needed to score a touchdown. And so uh, they take the field needing to gain chunks, you know, so they're a little more aggressive in their play calling that that requires us to be super tight in the way we play our coverages down the field. And we just, you know, again, we bled out yards in a situation where you can't afford to do that. So it's a it's a there's a lot that goes into that. Um, and I think a lot that we scrutinize. Listen, uh, at the end of the day, let's finish it with the ball in our hands. Let's find a way to get that first down. Let's get it to fourth and go and, and, and finish it that way. Um, and then certainly, you know, we're going to bet on our defense every time we have to be better, but, um, we'll improve from, from Saturday and we'll be better. Those exposures, those experiences create a situation where you move your team forward. And though it's painful, 
um, to me, it's the pain that, that, uh, that delivers you to um, an evolved version of self. And so we're going to get better from that, learn from it, and grow. Aria? Um, Clark, you know, what is the status of Ken Seals this week? And, um, you know, how's that the quarterback situation looking this week? Well, we're going to, we're going to start Mike this weekend. Um, we feel like that's the right thing. Kenny's still healing up and we're still week to week with him, but, um, you know, we want to make sure that we have the best chance to get out in front in terms of planning and, and also for Mike to get settled in that role. Ken's got a, and, um, we're disappointed for Ken, although I'm, I'm so proud of him. Um, I'm so proud of the way that he competed on the sideline on Saturday, the way that he supported Mike. I think there's really, a you know, that's an indicator of the, the kind of competitor, the kind of teammate that Kenny is. Um, just one of those things that it makes you proud as a coach to see. And so uh, what I know about Ken is he's going to work his way back to health. When he is, he'll be back out there for us. Uh, until then, I know he's going to give everything to this team and, and we'll keep evaluating him as we move forward. Bobby? Uh, so to be clear, it, so Ken will not be available for this game. And then also when he does get healthy, who's the starting quarterback? Not ready to declare Ken um, available or unavailable at this point. Um, but, but, but do know that he's got a ways to go or he's, um, you know, able to, to be, to take the starting share of reps. And so want to, want to build confidence around a plan with Mike this week and, and, um, and allow Ken the time to get healthy, not push him back, obviously, before he might be ready. Um, if, if he becomes available this week, then great. If not, then we'll keep moving forward with this plan and keep checking in. Um, as far as, you know, when Kenny is healthy and he's able to throw and he's returned to his level of performance that he was pre-injury, he's, he's, um, he's our starting quarterback, and we just got to give him time to do that. Um, you know, he's got to return to health and it's got to be full health and he's got to be able to do the things that make him, um, you know, a, uh, a shining spot on this team. And uh, we'll keep evaluating that. And, and um, it can't be part of the way. It's got to be all the way. And we can't rush him back. We have to be patient with it. Until then, we have a, a, a guy that we came out of fall camp saying he's 1B, right? Mike Wright has earned this opportunity. I thought he did a nice job on Saturday leading the offense again, with Ken's support. And we are fully confident in his abilities to, to, um, to help us win a game on Saturday. Ripley? Yeah, Clark, regarding the last drive on offense and the last drive on defense, sometimes you look back, back. at a game and say, well, we did the right things and we would execute it and call it that way again. It just didn't work out. Sometimes you might look back and say, well, Maybe we would have called it a little differently in hindsight. Now that you've had time to think about it and to look at film and and know what your team does well, what doesn't, what it doesn't do well, would you call it the same way again on both sides? And if not, what would you do differently? Well, I think the probably the without you know just the most scrutinized decision or the the, the highest pressure decision that I've faced was the the um, the third to fourth down. Um, I, I love the way our offense was calling it on the four minute drive. I think we were having the success. The, the run through TFL is a good defensive play on a counter. Um, we didn't quite sequence for momentum there. And so the third and seven, I loved the play call uh, with the, the run action um, uh, kind of read zone that had the, the, the option to throw cam in the flat. I thought that was a, a good design where we can protect the ball um, where we can, get the ball in the hands of a playmaker. And again, I, you know, we had two guys that were blocking the perimeter there and uh, Ben on a corner and Chris Pierce on a, on our, on their nickel. Um, if you give me that matchup 10 times, I'm taking it 10 out of 10. Uh, we weren't able to sustain the blocks on the perimeter. And so the ball gets tackled for a two yard gain in that moment. I, I, you know, we, we have these conversations ahead of time. You're, you're kind of fully aware of the, the opponents out of timeouts. When you, when you go for it on fourth down, you know, with a, obviously with a three point lead, you, you're, you're, it's a, you're a little safer there because the field goal ties 